Okay, so let's take a look at some of the key players in the South Africa versus New Zealand game and see what I think is going to happen. So with New Zealand, there's been some changes, but not a lot. I think there's been maybe about four changes. So Bowden Barrett has dropped to the bench, being replaced by Richie Mwanga. I'm not sure whether that is tactical or whether he's still not maybe 100% fit after his um, knock from last week when he was challenged in the air and landed on his neck. But most of the team has kept their place for this game. Shannon Frizzell, who was the try scorer for New Zealand, stays at six. He was also the person who gave up the try right at the end of the game and joined by their key man in the back row, R.D. Savea, who will be very important for trying to get some more gain line success this week. Some other key players who will need some big performances from New Zealand are players like Aaron Smith, Jordy Barrett, Rico Iwani, and the captain, Sam Kane. These guys are really going to need to step up their performances to be able to try and beat the box this weekend. There's a potential for a new cap on the bench with Fletcher Newell, who'll be coming on at tight head prop. Uh, it's a very inexperienced front row, um, sort of overall with this New Zealand team with a new cap and players like Ethan de Groot, who have only got a few caps for New Zealand, uh, who are probably going to struggle again with the South Africa front row because they've got the two best front rows in the world, really. Of course, their backup nine is Finlay Christie. My theory for why um, New Zealand have started dropping the ball is they have a Scotsman in their team now, and that's what we do is drop the ball. Now, for South Africa, uh, they've had some changes this week. One of the most notable ones is... Malcolm Marks dropping to the bench after having such a fantastic performance last week for the box. But when it comes to South Africa, that could potentially be seen as a promotion because they do often like to bring some of their better players off the bench later in the game, especially with their front rows. But of course, their front row is one of their key areas with pretty much the two best players in each position in the front row. Hendricks starts at 9 this weekend with, of course, Faf de Klerk still not being available after his head knock last weekend. And try scoring action for Vili LaRue still can't get him a start in this Springbok 15. Looking at pretty much every position in this team, people are saying it's a weakened squad. I've heard people describe it as that. I don't really see how you can say this is a weakened squad. You know, they've got the best players in pretty much every position in the world, in my opinion, this team, maybe bar a couple of areas. But you've got the absolute magic of the Kanyuam in there at 13 and the pace of Max Uli Mpimpi on the wing and the brute of Eben Etzebeth and his fantastic athleticism in that second row that's really going to put a lot of pressure on this All Blacks pack and in open play. I said in my preview for the Rugby Championship that I think New Zealand is going to get one win in South Africa. But after the performance I saw last week from them, I'm not sure that is going to happen. And I'm going to say that South Africa are going to win by nine points. Uh, the Rugby Forecast algorithm has South Africa to win by three points. So a fairly narrow victory is what they think. I think it will be... Still not a huge victory, but I don't think they're going to get too troubled again this week if we see the same performance from New Zealand as we did last week. If you would like to see my full preview of the Rugby Championship, you can check this video right here. Thanks for watching.